Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. JC here with another video on Action Temenin. Today we're going to check supporter formations, but before we start, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. So, supporter formations, what are they? What do we use them for? Why do I care? Well, supporter formations are going to be a combination of different supporters that you have to awaken and reach max level, max uh, affinity this these supporters and well actually have one copy of this if we go here you're gonna see that you need to acquire the supporter to reach max level and to reach max intimacy if you do that you're going to unlock a series of benefits the most important one being increasing your your hp like that is meaningful i have almost double hp thanks to the supporters that i have unlocked so that's great um, here you can see exactly how much HP you're going to increase for each one of these things. E even if you don't have like every single effect uh, max out, I have one, I think. Uh, I go down, 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 down. Come on. Oof, we need a scroller or something. Yeah. So here I do have the 0.16% increase to HP and the 40% increase to HP, but I don't have the 24% increase to HP because I don't have the affinity for New Year Kawaru. So that's a thing, like you get the benefit even if you don't have all the things, but you do not get the, the effect of the formation if you don't have it active, keep that in mind. So yeah, that's the first thing, the HP increase, that's super, super important. But another thing that is important are the various effects that this offers which some of them are pretty great. More, most of them are just like whatever, like it could be used, but it's not even that important or plain bad, depending on, on what it is. And the last thing that we have to take into consideration is that there's a plethora of uh, categories. Let's call them categories for the supporters. For example, we have Karajina, which is an F2P supporter. This one you get by doing an event. Well, if you were at the event, you would receive the copies of Katagina. Then we have Anemone, which is a premium supporter. It's always available in the gacha and in every limited gacha, she's also in the pool, so you can get her. Uh, there's also the seasonal supporters, which are F2P supporters that we receive copies of, but only on a certain period of time. And if you're not in that period of time, you're not, not gonna get the copies of the supporter and weapon, but maybe later you can buy the pack which offers one copy of the supporter just to unlock formations. Uh, we have character release limited supporters. These have one banner, that banner does not repeat. You can get these supporters in the packs for the renewal of a character. So yeah, these are pretty rare. So maybe you do want to get at least one copy for the formations. Keep that in mind. We also have another kind of limited. Uh -huh. Limited pack supporters, which are the supporters available in the gacha, along with a limited weapon, both limited supporter and weapon. And this, the supporter you can only get in the gacha or in desire shop. So be aware of that if you want to get uh, at least one copy for the formations, uh, like the easy pick is the desire shop. Um, and that's not all. We have more. This is a super rare supporter that fall into its own category because it's different from everything else. Let me explain. This one was from an event similar to the Demon weapons. If you know the demon weapons, uh, these ones actually, these weapons, you get one copy for free in the event and you have to roll the other copies in a gacha. Well, that Emily Simon supporters follows into the same category. Those events didn't thrive, so we didn't get any other supporters that fall into this special category, which is good. And this support was pretty bad, which is why people didn't get it or roll for it. But it's actually important because it, it comes in many useful formations. So I hope you get it and like you have it rather than you get it. And if if you can get this by re-rolling on the 
exchange facility, well, that would be a lucky roll. Trust me, you just need one copy, but it is important, even so. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. There's like other special supporters, but they are like super, super rare. And oh, yeah, I almost forgot the holidays supporter. The holiday supporters, if I'm not mistaken, there are three. There's the New Year supporters, that is going to be uh, New Year or New Lightning Yuki Kase, I think that's the name. Uh, there's also Halloween Zoo, Little Witch Zoo, as you can see. And for Christmas, we have Ingrid and um, uh, Rinko. Rinko, yeah, Rinko. Those are tied to their holidays. Whenever the holiday uh, comes back the next year, the, there's going to be a, their gacha and maybe they are available on the desire shop. Like, they're kind of special in their own way. So, as you can see, there's a bunch of limited supporters that maybe you do want to get. That's why it's important to roll on the limited supporters. Not only because of the fact that usually these have amazing effects, but also to increase your maximum HP and to unlock formations. Like, a bunch of the formations that I don't have are from limited supporters. I only have one from a permanent support that I, I, I still don't have. So keep that in mind. Now, to the effects. I'm going to synthesize this because many of the effects are variation of other effects just from the opposite end of the spectrum. If it's melee, then we have the other one that is critical, that, that, that is range. If we have uh, damage increase on a certain number, maybe we have the same, but for damage reduction. So let's check these effects we have first of all home alone home alone is one of the best effects in the game increases critical rate of melee attacks by eight percent increases critical damage of melee attacks by 15 percent a critical rate increase and a critical damage increase super super good there's also the uh, range uh, the range uh, option for this uh, supporter formation you can look, I'm not going to like show you every single formation, but you can look it up. And it's also pretty good, depending on what kind of characters you're using. Most of the characters in the game are melee, so yeah, this is the one that gives you the most value. What's the disadvantage? Having old supporters. That's pretty good. This is an old F2P supporter. We already got the rerun, so getting this might be difficult. And we know that the... Um, I think it's called Emergency Task Force uh, Recruitment or something like that. The, the paid banner for F2P supporters. It's pretty bad. So let's hope that Grimory gives us ways to get those old F2P supporters for free in the game whenever we want. Like, it wouldn't break the economy of the game if they balance it correctly. And it is pretty necessary especially for newer players then uh, we have after tranquility chaos flows damage against super armor enemy increased by 20 percent this is a pretty f2p formation and it gives you a 20 percent damage increase against super armor so if you are not using white fedraska probably you're going to face enemies that have super armor on br and to, to be totally honest, like most of the time you're going to take the benefit of this effect. And th this one this says damage increase. There's also its counterpart that says its counterpart that says damage reduction against super armor enemies. And that one is effectively always active, kinda, because you're gonna receive less damage from the enemy. But when you bring the super armor you are not going to get the damage reduction, but then neither is the enemy going to attack, so it doesn't really matter. Problem with this, the mobs. The mobs are not going to receive the benefit of this effect, so keep that in mind. It's still a pretty good and friendly uh, formation with only two supporters required. Um, Azure Blade and Crimson Fire. Damage increase by 12% when all three characters are alive in BR, uh, in time of 5 BR. Like... I would say super good, but it's just 
So it's actually not that great. If it was 20, it would be okay. Like you can get a similar value or more value with other formations, but it's easy to fulfill. So maybe you want to use it. The disadvantage of this formation, as you can see, character release limited supporter and seasonal supporter. If you don't have these two, well, that's pretty bad. Trust me. You want, well, you don't want this like a lot, but using it would be helpful depending on your strategy. How about uh, how about Kosue Squad? Damage increased against enemies inflicted with poison by 15%, damage taken from enemies inflicted with poison reduced by 8%. Uh, very quickly, there are var variations of this effect that apply for burn and for bleed, that I remember. Maybe there are other debuffs that also uh, count with this, but the thing is that I put this in my favorite because poison is actually the strongest one because of its long duration. Yeah, bleed also lasts long, but what's the problem? There are not that many supporters or characters that focus on keeping the enemy bleeding. Like bleed and poison were kind of weird effects because they were uh, just randomly put in some characters keys just cause uh, even though the character doesn't focus on doing that so yeah and, and after the rework some of the, those effects have been removed so yeah from this bleed is probably no no not bleed poison is probably the best because of two things number one Minasaki, which is a supporter that inflicts poison and increases damage against poisoned enemies, and also because of New Year Heavico, that is a limited supporter that whenever the enemy is debuffed, you have a 50% chance to inflict poison on your enemies. So it's permanently going to be debuffed the enemy with poison as long as you inflict one single debuff. So that's super, super good. And in my opinion, this variation of this uh, formation is the one that is the easiest to use and give you the most value. If you have those supporters, like for bleed is not as simple because n like there's, you have to really do a big effort to do a build for bleed. And the one for fire is not that great because of the duration. The, the fire is meant to deal a ton of burst damage after a couple seconds. So it's not going to long last. That's why it's not... Uh, the greatest. Then, the conqueror and the protector increase no damage increase by in arena battle by fifteen percent. For those PPP enthusiasts, this is gonna be great. There's also the counterpart for this one that gives you, if I'm not mistaken, ten percent damage reduction, which is also pretty good for uh, arena. If you want to use these formations, be sure to do so. They are pretty strong. Then. We have Keeper of Taimanin's Daily Life, which is going to be damage taken reduced by... No, damage taken reduced in daily quest by 25%. And we have the opposite, Fight for Survival, which says damage increase in dailies by 25%. Let me elaborate on this, because though they are pretty simple, and yes, you obviously, obviously want uh, Fight for Survival more than uh, Keepers of Taimanin's Daily Lives, the first one is going to help out those who are starting the game because damage reduction is pretty valuable for consistency and to be able to clear stages. Then when you are doing out of farming and you don't care about anything anymore, just use this one. Fight for survival is going to be your go-to. Like big free damage just cause on dailies. It is super great for farming. Then... Rabbit Hunters. Rabbit Hunters says damage increase in Time of Fight BR by 12%. This, you have an activation condition, but it's with two supporters, and unfortunately one is limited and one is seasonal. This one, this is permanent, permanent F2P. So yeah, this is way better, but maybe the requirements are higher-ish? Like, the other one was limited and seasonal. These ones are permanent and have to piece, but there are three, so... Yeah, I mean, 
I wouldn't use these formations even so. Like, I don't think that 12% damage increase is good enough to use this. Oof, my favorite, the name of Fuma. Why is the name of Fuma my favorite? Because it has two good effects. Number one, increase damage gel with normal attacks to enemies with debuffs by 6%. On BR, you're going to debuff the enemy. And yeah, perhaps you do not abuse your normal attacks, but you hit the enemy every now and then with normal attacks. Then, reduce damage taken from bosses by 20%. Yeah, you're not reducing the damage of the mobs, but the biggest amount of damage comes from the bosses. So this is pretty useful. And it's a big number, it's 20%. The moment we go beyond 15%, those effects are worth uh, considering. Remember that, like, usually you're gonna have like less than 10% on your effects and those are like usable but not impressive. The moment they go beyond that, uh, maybe starting from 15, that's when you want to consider them. Build me a headphone. Increase damage dealt with ultimate by 20%, increase particle charge by speed by 25%. So, pretty easy to build because you use a permanent and an F2P supporter. This is all that it already got the repeat, so I hope you have it. But what is the worth of this? Like, it is super specific, but you can do two things with this. Number one, weapon active strategies. Number two, ultimate strategies. Those are a thing. They are very niche. I'm still trying to build a team that revolves around that. But it is like, you need a ton of things to be set in place to be able to use this. And this for super supporter formation is pretty good for that. So maybe if you want to abuse those two, you want to use this formation. Just to um, like... Uh, highlight this then we have the other ones that I don't put in the in the favorites and we're not going to analyze them each one individually we're going to mention like the trends and the the things that we can see in most formations for example all of these three said reduce damage taken from a trait enemy by 7% machine human and demon as you can see, these are R's. These are super easy for beginners. So maybe you're going to use them. The problem is that you have to change them constantly uh, between stages. Increase HP restoration, pretty bad. Uh, like, it is good for regions, for region effect, like uh, Shizuru, uh, Emily, Heiko. Those characters have regions. But Characters with HP recovery that is based on the percentage of the damage don't need this. They need damage increase so that they heal more. Just so that you keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. Effects that increase the drop rate of something are pretty bad. Do not even consider them. Increase damage dealt with range attacks on snare enemies by 8%. This is worth mentioning. You use two SR supporters this uh, snare is good but it's better when you're using it with a ranged character and there's another sr supporter that easily snares the enemies so for beginners this is actually pretty usable like it's not busted but it is not uh, something you should uh, just dismiss increase damage dealt with weapon skills uh, pretty bad because it doesn't give you particle charge reduce the duration of all debuffs there is no enemy or there's like a handful of enemies but they don't feel oppressive enough uh, that abuse debuffs like queen canalo and queen aragne are um, abuse debuffs but they don't abuse them enough for me to want to cleanse myself with uh, this kind of uh, debuff reduction so i do not recommend this reduce the cooldown of supporter skills and um, Pretty niche, niche effect, and I do not recommend it because it's only 5%. If it was between 10 and, and 20%, I would recommend it. But it is just too short of a cooldown uh, reduction. Then, let's see. 
Reduce damage taken from all enemies. A goodish, goodish, like generic, good, usable, but it is very low. The number is just not good enough and it uses a limited support, so not the greatest. Reduce damage taken from bosses, usable, but it uses a limited, uh, um, an F2P supporter that already got the rerun, so I hope you have it if you want it. Um, increase the critical damage of melee attacks. Yeah, I, oh, if I, I have it full, what a shame. Generic good, you do want this, the, and the opposite is also good, like increase critical damage of range attacks by 12%, it's also great. Like, generic good, pretty easy to build, except for the fact that it uses a, a limited bot. Yeah, if you can use it, why not? Reduce damage taken by demon type characters by 6%. Uh, pretty bad, like, the fact that it's just a 6% for a specific trait is pretty bad. We compare it, like, it uses, this is mileage, and this is, I, I forgot to mention the mileage supports there are two no three mileage supports and this is permanent and this is limited and this is permanent so i think this is way better than this because this is restrictive and it gives you one percent more just for that restriction it should be 10 10 would be worth considering enemies are no another drop uh, increase which is bad increased damage dealt to bosses the counterpart of the damage reduction uh, it also uses uh, the mileage supporter and uh, an F2P supporter that we cannot get. Usable at the beginning of the game, I guess. Then, increase damage dealt to enemies with buffs by 8%. Pretty bad, because we don't have means to inflict critical buffs or attack buffs to the enemy. We do not want defense or invincibility on the enemy as buffs, because you're not going to be able to deal with the enemy. We want attack buff or critical rate buff. That's the best kind of debuff. There's one supporter that inflicts that buff to the enemy. Or, well, gives that buff to the enemy. But it is not consistent and it's not. it doesn't even have a good effect. We need that demerit more to buff the enemy. It's super great. Um, let's see. Spider Mistress. Increase damage dealt to demon type enemies. Um, we're going to think that this is for all the traits like we have the variations for machine and for human usable as you can see like similar to the vrs that gives you 12 percent damage increase but the same it's kind of lowish because it's barely beyond 10 percent increased critical rate of range attacks by five percent pretty bad like critical rate is not the greatest it doesn't increase your damage yes dealing the crit increases your damage but you can do that with enchantment increases critical rate of melee attacks the counterpart part also not great increases damage dealt against machine type enemies the same as this one but for machines increases damage dealt with skills to enemies with debuffs by 15 percent this one is good this one is very very good the problem is onigumo First supporter in the game hasn't had its rerun or the global uh, server. It had a rerun on JP and they haven't announced anything about it. They haven't done anything on that regard. I hope that they give us a rerun or something or that they implement a way to get all the F2P supporters like they should. Like we really need it. Increases ultimate damage, pretty bad. If you don't have the particle charge increase, this is bad. Um, and besides, there's, like, most of the damage that you do comes from your skills and basics in a, in a, uh, whenever you do a run in a stage, but if you want to focus on ulti damage, like, you need a ton of multipliers for that ulti damage and particle charge. If not, you're not going to do that much damage with the ulti. Then, increase critical rate or critical damage and rate of range attacks by 18%. Decent, decent, but get why? Critical damage, 18%, uh, limited to only range attacks, but, oof, Emily Simons, you know, the one supporter with the super, super rare uh, availability because of her conditions. Oof, I hope you have this. And also Yosora, 
a very old F2P supporter which already received her, her rerun. Increase damage against the demos. This is the demon one. Obviously, it's usable, pretty good. Reduce damage taken from machine type enemies by 7%. Increase damage dealt to machine type enemies by 10%. So, yeah, uh, there's gonna be these ones. Obviously, there's gonna be the counterparts for human and demon. I, I don't remember that much. And oof, look at this. Once again, Emily. Um, it is not that bad. You get a modest damage reduction and a damage increase that reaches at least at least 10%. Like I would prefer to have a 10-10 in 10 in the damage reduction, 10 in the damage increase. That would be actually good. But it is usable. Increase your max HP by 20%. Pretty niche. For the most part, you don't want this. Like you prefer damage reduction in most situations. But if you don't have other ways to make yourself tanky, you may use it. Reduce damage taken from all enemies by 15% when debuffed or snare or stunned. Pretty bad because it says stunned. That means that it's for you. Or, well, I assume that this is for you. And you don't want to be debuffed in the first place. So, unless you don't want to take damage when you are debuffed. So, bad. Increase particle charge speed by 20%. If you don't have the other one that gives you 25 and ulti damage. This would be usable, but no, I don't think so. Onigumo. <clears throat> Onigumo. In any case. Oh, this, these effects. Uh, these are a trend, like we, we can see the other one here. It says, reduces damage taken from human type enemies by 20% and reduces damage dealt to human type enemies by 20%. And this one is the same, but for machines. So we have these ones. And while they seem appealing at first because of the big number, the damage reduction is not ideal. Like, usually you're not going to rely on poison or a debuff that deals damage to defeat the enemy. And with the timer, this uh, reducing the, that your damage is pretty bad. So you might use them if you have a lot of troubles with survivability, but not with damage. So you might use them, but I do not recommend them. Reduce damage taken by human type characters. Another damage reduction. This is going to be the same for machine. This one is damage increase, but we have this damage reduction, damage increase. This one is actually better because it reaches 13% and this one 15%. Those are nice. Those are nice. Increase critical rate of ranged attacks by 8. And oh yeah, the, the opposite of, of um, Home Alone. Pretty good. You may use this. Super great. Increase your HP by 10% and increases damage dealt with melee attacks by 10%. Usable, but, you know, but. Increase your range attacks critical rate by 10% against stun or groggy enemies. Bad, terrible, you don't want it. Like, it's only when the enemy is stun or groggy, so they should not have super armor, number one. And number two is only critical rate, not critical damage. Reduce damage taken from demons and reduce damage dealt to demons. The the other one that synergizes with this. Grimory, I would like you to put like the similar effects together. That would be easier to evaluate. <laughs> In any case. Then we have the, the counterpart of this one. These ones are damage reduction. And these ones are damage increased by 10%. But also increases damage taken from those enemies by 8%. Those are actually worth it. They are particularly good if you plan on using the Oboro uh, Mind Control Abuse, you know. That's super great because the enemy doesn't attack you. So you're able to just deal a bunch of damage. And it's 20% free damage. Preferably you use the one for Demon, if we have the one for Demon. Increase damage dealt to machine type enemies. No, no, no. It's, it's to the enemy itself. So these are pretty good. If you focus on abusing debuffs or some kind of control over the enemy. If not, if you're going to take damage, these are not your first option. If you want to go with something balanced that gives you both damage increase and damage reduction, don't try this. So just be sure to use it on the right strategy. This one is pretty, pretty good. Increase your HP by 10% and increase your damage dealt with range attacks. The, the opposite of the one that we saw. Usable, but not busted. Increase your melee attack critical rate. Oof, the same. Pretty bad. 
Increase damage dealt to demon type enemies by 12%. Increase damage taken from demon type. Yeah, this is 20 and 8, which is worth it. This is 12 and 6. This is not worth it. I don't know why Grimory did that. Like, they should be like 20 and 8 for all traits, not like this. This is horrible. And then we have the one for humans is 6 and 6. Damage dealt, damage taken. It is even worse than the demon one. I don't know why they did it. Maybe they thought that it, the, the machine was too busted. Increase damage dealt by demon type characters by 16%. Increase critical rate of demon type characters. This one is pretty good for VR and for any kind of content, like in general. Uh, increase damage dealt by. If you use the same, uh, a, a full demon team. And the same is going to be applied for the ones for human and machine. It is pretty good for the synergies. And if you have supporters that you put in the main, that give you an extra passive, that benefit all demons, all machines, or humans, that's going to be even better. Maybe you want to use this one. Those are pretty good effects. Reduce the damage taken from ranged attacks by 15%. Increase your HP restoration. Uh, usable. Definitely usable, but, 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 as usual. Yeah, Emily there. Um, like, the problem is that most damage is going to be melee, but it is worth it, even so. Increase damage dealt to all enemies by 12%. Reduce damage taken from all enemies by 8%. Super good and generic, but mileage. That's the only problem. I hope that you get at least one copy of this so that you can activate this because it's it's generally good. Increase critical rate of range attacks, increase critical damage of range attacks. This is the opposite of of Home Alone. There was another one like that. Let me know in the comments what mistake I did, guys. <laughs> well, in any case, increase damage dealt by human type characters, reduce damage taken by human type characters. Demon type characters, 16. Increase damage dealt by 16. Increase critical rate. Increase damage dealt by human type characters 10 and 6. Same as with the other ones. Like like the one about machines. That it was 20% with an 8% demerit. They didn't do them like all of them equally. So one of them is going to be better than the other ones. Increase your HP and increase damage of the ultimate. Pretty bad. Increase damage dealt with melee attack and increase damage dealt with range attacks. Pretty good, but super special, limited, unlimited. Oof, bad. Increase damage dealt to machine type enemies by 12%. Increase particle charge speed. Usable. Not posted. Not the most amazing thing in the world, but usable. Especially if you want to use your ultimates or weapon actives. Increase damage dealt uh, with range attacks by 15%. Reduce damage taken from range attacks by 17 uh, Okay, usable and good. Increase damage dealt with melee attacks by 25%. Increase damage taken from melee attacks by 25%. Uh, also an option if you want to abuse Oboro along with the, uh, two melee attackers. But it is very risky. This, this red number is big. Just so that you know. Uh, then we have the trend of um, protect, uh, suppress, and assist. It says damage of protect type characters or assist type characters, suppress type characters increased by 12%. Usable for sure, but this one is limited. <laughs> and look at this. Limited, permanent, and event. So, yeah. <laughs> I see what you did there, Grammary. And then we have damage dealt to Protect type characters is increased by 12% damage critical rate. Um, this one, I think, is going to work on Arena. Because I don't think that the uh, enemy, the enemies have, like, types. They, they do have uh, traits. They have the human, demon, and machine. But I don't think they have protect. Maybe they're going to add that into the game later. I, I don't think that's going to be the case, but... It would be interesting for sure. Uh, damage dealt. Th that's generally good. Damage. No, critical rate increase. This is pretty bad. Like, 
We have the trend, but it is not that great. Critical damage of protected characters increased by 16%. Uh, I have the one for protect and suppress. These are good. These two are pretty good. Maximum HP of assisted characters, of protected characters, of suppressed characters increased by 12%. Not that impressive at all. Like, as I mentioned, them HP increase. If it's not 20, it's acceptable-ish. Beyond that, it's good. But less than 20 is like, why would I want to do that? So, don't use these ones. Increase damage dealt to human type enemies by 10%, reduce cooldown of the supporter by 3%, reduce damage taken from human type enemies by 10%, and the cooldown reduction the same. So these are the counterparts. These are very difficult to achieve because seasonal, holiday, limited, character release limited. So you see, these supports are not easy to get, and nor are these effects that important that you actually want to use them. Like... Yeah, the 10% for damage increase or damage reduction are usable, but the skill cooldown is not that valuable, especially on a 3%. Increase damage dealt to demon type enemies by 8%, increase damage dealt with weapon skills by 10%. Uh, like, it isn't synergistic. We need particle charge with uh, weapon skill damage, not something like this. And the demon, demon damage is not good enough. The speed of suppressed type characters increases by 10%. This is a good effect just because it's permanent and doesn't have a, a difficult condition. You can go with a full suppressed team and it's not that hard. The hard part is the supporters, you know? This is F2P, but it is very old and we already got the rerun. Like, I'm gonna end up doing everything, but it's fine for you guys. I'll do anything. Reduce damage taken from demon type enemies by 8%. Increase damage dealt with weapons. Okay. Increase damage dealt. Reduce damage taken. The counterpart of this one. And it is also pretty bad for the same reasons. Increase damage of familiar type. Oof. This could be good. But right now it is not good. It is only good if you do solo content with Shisui. Because most of the damage from Shisui comes from the familiar. The other characters with familiar don't deal most of their damage with their familiars. So, it's usable, not the greatest. Uh, if you want to use it on, on dailies, it's actually pretty easy to use. Damage of X-type character increased by 12%. Damage dealt with melee attacks is increased by 8%. Pretty good. If you feel both... Uh, both conditions, you're gonna get a 20% damage increase. And doing a pure team for assist, protect, suppress that are melee is not that hard. So definitely good, pretty good, these three. And difficult parts about this? Noah, because she's character release limited and she already, um, her pack was already out. So who knows when we're gonna get, be able to get her once again. Uh, let's see. Damage increased by 2% every second for 3 seconds while not attacking, stack up to 30 times. Do not be deceived, this is terrible. This is not Elden Ring or some other kind of game where we can buff ourselves before attacking and then just explode the enemy. No, we buffed ourselves with attacks and other skills. And we're not gonna wait like 3 times 10, 30 seconds. Stack up to 30 times. No, even more. Like a minute and a half or something like that. <coughs> Just to get that 60% um, damage. It is not worth it. Like all the damage you miss in the meantime, it's not worth it. So don't use this. Speed increase by 10% for 30 seconds at the start of combat. Don't use this because it has a limited duration. There's like very niche scenarios where you want to use this so don't please like the only exception would be fighting a boss and that's the only thing in the stage and you just obliterate it super fast that's the only exception not time of ibr but uh, a, an event boss <coughs> sorry give me one moment mm. 
damage against enemies inflicted with burn. Ah, it's the, the counterpart of the poison one. As I mentioned, not that great. Damage when character reach. Oh, character in time of FBS is increased by. Um, this is bad because you have to change constantly uh, from with your characters. And that's a mechanic like most people do not use. It, it is there and it's supposed to be used, but it, it is like a total hassle to do so. And if it was like permanent, like you change your character and you have the buff until you the cooldown goes down so that you can change your character and you always have a buff up, that would be great, but it is not. This one is uh, worth noticing because it says cheer gosh, gosh. Um, charges speed, a uh, cheer gauge charge speed in in battle arena increased by thirty percent. Duration of the buff of this gauge increases by five seconds. It is pretty good for PvP enthusiasts, but seasonal supporter damage increase against enemies we inflicted with wet. Whew. We do have this variation. You need a character release limited supporter. There's three ways to inflict wet. You either have uh, Eleanor, you have the Eleanor supporter on the main, this ex exact supporter, or you have the limited supporter uh, for the pack on the main. If you don't have any of those, you're not going to use this. And wet is not positive en enough for you to use this. I do not recommend it. Uh, but it could be a thing if you want to use Eleanor as a supporter. The thing is that Eleanor revolves around her her limited pack too much. She needs a buff for her kit in general. Or maybe the wet debuff needs a buff. Then, damage of range attack increased by 12% HP restoration. It is not that bad, but two limited supporter. One character reliefs and one pack. So yeah, that's bad. Damage dealt with melee attacks increased by 12%. HP restoration increased. Oof! This is the counterpart, and it's actually pretty good. But two, two character release supporters, limited supporters, you know. Penetration against demo type enemies increased by eight percent. So problems with this. Most, if I'm not mistaken, uh, penetrations effect are gonna go um, are gonna be less than ten percent, and that I do not like. You could use them for to gain penetration, but it's like kind of annoying. That is not even 10%. Um, and obviously there's other sets of condition. This is seasonal. Uh, this is limited. And it gives you fortitude. Fortitude also something bad. It is even worse than uh, penetration. Because it gives like 4%, 6%. Some of the effects that you can see here. Damage taken reducing battle arena. The one that I mentioned. Uh, like almost at the beginning of the video. Ah, there's these effects that give you uh, enhanced performance of X character in Battle Arena. This is the second character. It gets damage reduction and damage increase. You might use those if you are a PvP enthusiast. Damage taken reducing time of IBR when only one character remains. The, I'm going to tell you right now. The effects that say when only one character remains in BR, ignore them. The only moment you want to use those is when you're doing a solo run that's it for the memes other than that you don't use this ever and holiday supporter damage increased by 10 percent when having friend tower uh pretty bad uh if you i have never used this mechanic but if you use this mechanic you might use it penetration of mid attacks increased by eight percent generally good but holiday supporter Fortitude of protected characters increased by 6%. Holiday and seasonal. Penetration against machine type enemies increased by 6%. Damage taken from monsters with super armor. This, this sounds super weird. Uh, let's just say enemies with super armor reduced by 20%. This one is good. This, this one is usable. Uh, keep it in. Keep an eye on this one. Damage of last character alive in VR. Also bad. <laughs> we don't need to read it. Penetration of protective characters increased by 12%. Uh, yeah, but... Oof. Character release. Limited pack. Event. This one is like its own category also. Like 
it is not event event it was like a campaign supporter that was given to us similar to Cisoland, but a little bit different we didn't get the four copies so yeah uh when below 50 percent immediately restore 20 percent of max xp activates once don't use this because of the one time activation condition if it was like multiple times on a certain time frame it could be used yes then damage against enemies inflicted with bleed the same that we talk about like potion poison burn and wet but we said that bleed has its disadvantages immediately restore hp upon acquiring particle orbs pretty bad because you have to acquire a particle orb the item so you need to rely on mobs uh, i mean it is good for dailies or or story at the beginning of the game but i don't think you're gonna have these supports at the beginning of the game Penetration against human type targets increase, okay, but limited, well, character release technically. Uh, penetration of support, of sup, sup, ah, yep, yeah. this is a mistake, guys. This should be either assist or suppress or maybe protect, but support green? I don't know what is that. Penetration of uh, support type characters increased by 8%. And we have a, a seasonal supporter here. And then the ones that I don't have. Damage taken reduced by 12% while all three characters are alive in VR. The counterpart of the good effect that we got. Yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, increased damage dealt with melee attacks. Usable, but limited. Like here, you're going to start to see a lot of limited combinations. That, that's why I don't have them. Increased damage dealt with range. Also good. Increased damage dealt by human type characters. Also good. Increased damage of melee attacks against snare enemies. Usable, but not great. As I said, mission you you can take advantage of this with range attacks, with range attackers. Uh, increase damage dealt with melee attacks and uh, reduce damage taken from melee attacks. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Uh, reduce damage taken from machine type characters by twelve percent. Increase critical damage of machine type characters by twelve percent. Good, but it uses a character release limited supporter that is awful. Nobody wanted to roll for this. Damage dealt with assist type characters reduced by 12%. Usable, yeah, for sure, good. Damage dealt with suppressed type characters increased by 12%, good. Critical damage of assist type characters increased by 16%, good. Speed of protected characters increased by 10%, good. Speed of assist type characters increased by 10%, good. Damage taken reduced in time FIVR VR by 10%, usable, like, it is not the biggest one, but yes, good. Damage increased by 20% for 15 seconds at the start of combat. Um, no, 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 it's not worth it. Like, the the one that is worth it is the one that gives you damage for at uh, the start of the the run or maybe speed increase, but damage reduction is not worth it. Because if you're not going to withstand the damage of the, the enemies, like, throughout the battle, 15 seconds are not going to to save you. 42 of, of assist type characters increased by 6%, uh, bad for the most part. And high toll, these are two holiday supporters. Damage taken by last peak character in battle arena reduced by 9%, and damage of the last peak character is increased by 9%. Usable for uh, arena enthusiasts, but like I think the other one was better, the one for the second supporter, the, the second uh, peak. Damage increased by 3% every particle you have, and particle uh, charge amount from attacks is reduced by 50%. So you can get a 30% damage increase, like, all the time, which is good enough. Like, that is kind of what you get from using Stella or, or what's the name, Torajiro. But charging your particles fully takes time, and it's going to take double time because you get a 50% damage reduction so uh, i would have to test this unfortunately i don't I, I can't because i don't have this supporter limited character pack and this one is also limited character pack so keep that in mind penetration of range attacks is increased by 10% good i love it i love this one because it gives a 10% just 2% more and i am hooked with this unfortunately Limited and limited, both character pack. Fortitude increased by 40% for 10 seconds when below 20% HP. Activates only once per battle. I am not sold on this one. It is pretty bad. Why not? If 
you're going to make me take a risk, you should give me a broken reward. Like at least 90% fortitude, which means one out of every 10 hits is going to deal damage. So, yeah, I, I don't think that it's worth it. And also 10 seconds, the duration is just too long. Uh, too, too short, sorry, too short. Grimory, if you want to, to give us risk effects, it's fine. Remember to make them broken. We're taking a risk, right? So it should be broken. Like, the Berserker weapons are not good for the same reason. And the, there, there's other supporters that also activate on on risky situations that are not used because the risk is not worth the reward. Lastly, uh, penetration of rest characters is increased by 10%. Pretty good, but limited and limited. If these gachas ever come back, I'll try to get them. Like the the difficult ones are the the character release ones, but I can get them on the packs. But these ones, oof, it's like hard. I do need them. Well, in any case, guys, what do you think about the supporter formations? Which do you think are the best supporter formations? Which are your favorites? Which combinations of characters and formations and supporters you use to abuse certain effects? Let me know in the comments so that everyone can share their experience, can share some crazy combos that you use on different stages. So that maybe the community can build more things, you know? And that's it for today. And I'll be seeing you next time. Bye!